Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I think there's a synchrony between the choir and myself. Hallelujah. Last week, you guys practically like preached what I wanted to say. Sang what I wanted to say. Now today, yeah. Amen. Amen. It shows that God is the same spirit. Hallelujah. Let's just share a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, oh Lord, because you are here to bless your children. You are here to teach us. You are here to guide us. You are here to strengthen our faith. Thank you, Father God, because your entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, I hide myself behind the cross of God. And I say, Lord, none of me but all of you. Let my tongue be like that of a ready writer. And let me speak according to that which you have instructed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I bring greetings from Reverend. I'm sure he's watching us by now. Hallelujah. Praise God. This service, this Sunday service, I'll be talking about the God who is all in all. The God who is all in all. And I'll be taking my text from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. That's from NKJV. Or KJV. A normal issue between the two. He says, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think According to the power that is at work in us. In the song that they said, they said, with the amount of faith in this room, what can God not do? And in my study of the Bible, I've noticed that the word all is frequently linked with God and what he does for his children. The word all. So you hear people call him the almighty. The all-knowing. Omniscient. The all-sufficient. The all-powerful. Omnipotent. Please don't say omnipotent. You know, yeah, omnipotent God, omniscience God. Omni means small. It's omni. Hallelujah. The omnipotent, all powerful. So I decided to check what all means. The Merriman Webster's dictionary says. All, all, another words that we can use, synonyms that we can use for all, is whole, entire, total. It also means including everything or everyone without an exception. So when they say all, it means that there is no exception. Everything is included. So if they say, how many people are in the class? All of us are in the class. That means there is no absentee. If they say all Nigerians, that means that they've counted everyone both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria without exception. Now this is not surprising. Shouldn't be surprising if all is linked with God. Because he's not a God of half measures. He doesn't start a project and leaves it undone. 
or leaves it unfinished or uncompleted. You can never see uncompletion, unfinished, associated with God. It's not him. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, that was when we were first introduced to what God was doing, so to speak. Even though it's a from Genesis chapter 1. During the creation story. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. And see the things that the Bible says about God there. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it, he rested from all his work which God had created and made. In three verses, we find three alls. After God created the heaven and the earth, there has not been anything else that has been created by man. Everything he created in the earth and the entire universe has been sustaining mankind since then. So if you hear a discovery, it's not creation. It's discovery. Man keeps discovering the things that God has made available from creation. Nothing can be created outside of what God has done. It's just discovery. Hallelujah. You can pump two with four and they call you the creator, but you are just a discoverer. It's like when somebody said uh, they found the people in a place and they, and they called the place after the person. I said, were there no people there? And they said somebody found the, the source of river energy. I said, the people that have been there before come. Was it a bare land you saw? There were people there. You just discovered it. It had been created. Hallelujah. So, everything that God does is in relation to mankind. Everything he does. He's completely sold out to us. Completely. That's why the devil was angry. That despite all of us that are here, see the legion of angels that we, we are all here. They are still looking for somebody. What did we find? That's why he got angry. He said, ah, all of us are here. God is still saying, hmm, it's not complete. Let's make man in our image after our likeness. So we, we not fit. We that we are saying, Hosanna, praise, glory, hallelujah. What of us? She so said, eh, okay, me too, let me too do my own kingdom. And we know the end of his story. Mankind is the topping of the cake. Of all that God created. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So when you're looking for God, you don't need to go far. Just look at me. I mean, it's image and likeness. I resemble God. Where, where? You know when they say, you look like him, Papa? It's me. I don't know about you. If you're looking for God, don't go far. Just look for me. If you cannot find me physically, look for me on social media. Anyhow I look that day, that's the way God looks. Mm. He says, according to our image, in our likeness, not only that, then the way I am, 
Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea because God is the, is the all in all. And anyone that is in his image and likeness must not be less. A lion must not give birth to a cat. It doesn't work. And they've been a lanjo. So God knows that if these ones are going to be in my image and my likeness, then they must have dominion. They will have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Total dominion. Without any exception. No wonder David in Psalm 8 verse 4, he was asking God in amazement. He said, what is man? That you are mindful of him. And the son of man that you visit him. Just follow me. What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. Then in verse 5 to 8, you will see the things that he said there that was also like a reflection of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, you make him a little like Elohim. You gave him this one. You gave him dominion. Tell your neighbor it's all about you. All about you. The God who is all in all is all about you. Now let's take a look at some of the things that God provided for us. Number one, very important, and the most important, I would say, salvation is for all. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus, when he was giving his command or his charge, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Where did he say? All the world, all. Whether discovered or non-discovered. Matthew 28, 18 to 19 says, all authority, you see that word again, all. No exception. No exception. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. I'm not a local champion. I'm not a king that, is a, that can be doing bragado somewhere. Then when he gets to another place, he's now a... I am king of all kings. So all dominion, all authority. That's why the Yorubas call him Obatun by Dobali Oba. The king that demands the obeisance of all kings. That whether you are Igbo, you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are whatever. Whether you are British, you are Canadian. As long as you are a king, you are subject to a king. The king of all kings. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Again, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's willingness that all men should be saved appeared in these scriptures. When he sent them forth, he has all men in mind. It doesn't matter whether everybody has, you know, received him or not. But all men have been catered for. All. Without any exception. Even that terrorist that everybody hates, God has made a provision for him. We can see in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23. Ezekiel 23. God said, do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? So all of you be, all my enemies, fall down and die, fall down and die. See what God said here. He's on scriptural to pray for your enemy to fall down and die. You are walking against God. 
You are walking against God. Because your enemy is a wicked person. Is that not so? Look at what he says. He says, do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says the Lord God. And not that he should turn away from his ways and live. That's what Apostle Paul said in his charge to 1 Timothy. Chapter 2. After exhorting that, you know, prayer should be made for all category of people. He now said the reason is because God desires that all men be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. The reason we, the reason we will know that you, you are not like God. Eh? Is when you pray that prayer. There's a difference between a shepherd and an underling or a hireling. You know when a shepherd, when evil is coming to the shepherd's sheep, he will stand and guard it. But hireling, you not consign me. Ogota, Ogota, my salary must be complete. Last, last, I will tell him, ah, Oga, if you see the beer, if you see the beer, it's as big as this. I have to run for my life. Because you are not the creator. That's why you can tell people to fall down and die. If you were the one that paid that price, you know we're singing it, I'll never know how much it costs. You can never know, that's why. If you knew, you wouldn't try what you're trying. You won't say what you're saying. You won't pray what you're praying. Just like our children, we never know what it costs us to send them to school. Even you, you don't know how much it costs your parents to send you to school. You were just saying, Daddy, it's time. It's semester. It's semester. You don't know whether they sold their clothes, whether they went hungry, whether they starved to give you that money. And some of us will even say the money is small. Some, people, some parents will look at you like this. And shake their head. <laughs> if you know what it took me to get you this money, that you say it's more. I remember my father that time. When you bring your list to him, <laughs> the first question you ask is this accountant. That's what I told myself. I said I will never marry an accountant. He will just come. Mm -hmm. Which ones are the ones and the need here? Like sister, sister, I didn't like accountant when I was growing up. Aish. He would just look at her and say, Oh, yeah, separate the need and the want. I will say everything is want. He said, mm -mm, It's not. My father didn't believe that I only was a want, eh, was a need. It was final year in my school that I bought iron for, by myself from my project money. But, uh -uh, no, enough is enough. Borrowing iron. Uh -uh. People will be insulting you. Eh, where's my iron? The iron, the face is black. Why did you iron it like this? Uh -uh. I said, No, this is final year. But I'll just tell you, what is the want here? Separate it. And if you complain, you say, you know the hands are equal. There are some parents that will give their children television fridge. I can't afford that. But I will make sure I send it to school. So which one is important? If you are complaining, go and collect the remaining from your mother. It doesn't consign him. He will tell you, oh, ha, my father didn't send me to, to school after secondary school. I sent myself to Yabatek. So, you should be very grateful that I'm sending you to the university. What is it? He's doing more. <laughs> He's doing more than his father. He's so brag. Whenever you come, say it's not your fault. I studied, I was working, I set myself to wear a bag. So, anytime he says, okay, you said, yes, you went to school, yes. You said yourself to wear a bag. We know that's the end of the matter. So, just. Collect it. Anything you collect, just take and go. Go and, go and fight with your mother. What no more? Hallelujah. Salvation is for all. He desires that all men be saved. So we should be like him and go after those people. Somebody, you spoke to somebody, the person is not answering, say, ah, well, I cannot keep myself. Oh. If you like, no, you don't know what you're missing. When you get to heaven, after all, my hands are clean. Eh? You chase after the person. You pray for the person. You keep on praying for the person. Until the person gets saved. So into the life of the person by prayers. Because God wants every man to be saved. Number two, healing is for all. We're talking about the God who is all in all. 
Healing is for all. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people. There was no sickness that was above Jesus. Even when his life was being threatened and the Pharisees were plotting to kill him. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 15, the Bible says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, trying to protect himself. And great multitudes followed him. The Bible says he healed them all. This is the person that was trying to hide though. Yet, when people followed him, his compassion welled up. He couldn't turn his, way, his face away from them. He couldn't cast them away. Because he is their creator. He is omnipotent. He can heal all manner of sickness or disease. If you are sick here, whether you are on site or online, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask. Just ask him in faith today. And say, Father, this, this thing, I know you can take it away because you have paid the price. I receive my healing. Let's go to Psalm 145. And see some characteristics of God in relation to mankind there. 145, Psalm 145. We'll start with verse 9. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Can you say those words again? All. God is good to all. You hear some people say, ah, <laughs> Some people are closer to God, you know, than others. And I wonder, ah, when they want to pray, they say, ah, you know, God hears some people's prayer. Oh, if you go to that man of God, ah, hmm. the things that God, in fact, he has God's line. Hmm. That's why some people will say, alone with this, alone with that, the God of this, the God of that. Don't you know? It's because they ascribe that that person. Oh, he has he has the, the lost nine one one. Hallelujah! But if you know he's my God, what did Jesus say? He says, "I am going to your God and my God, my God and your God." So you don't need to pray. Allah no kiss me, shush. My God. And if you want to make it closer, my Father. He is good to all. As long as we're a member of the family, even his mercy and his loving kindness still trickles to everybody. That's why everybody wakes up in the morning every day. The wicked should not rise up, but it's because he's good to all. Because in Ezekiel, they are so that he doesn't desire that the wicked should die in their sins. So he will wake them up morning by morning. And they think that it is because they have power. If they don't know that they are, they, are, they are enjoying the mercy of the Father. So when somebody that is making a just say, mm. the Lord is good to all. If not, somebody like you should wake up. Number four, his dominion is on all generations. Psalm 145 verse 13. His dominion is on all kingdoms. He says, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. His authority will not wane. 
whether it is 00 BC or AD, 00 AD or 2023 AD, his authority, his dominion is still intact. He doesn't win. He's not reducing. He's not like those kingdoms. They say Mali kingdom. Then it was very big. Then they started reducing. Then uh, can you call Ottoman Empire. He's, God doesn't have that one. His dominion is all. He is king. He is God. He is Lord over every generation. No matter whether you reckon with him or you don't. He's still the master and maker of all creation. Number five. He upholds all. Remember we're talking about the God who is all in all. He upholds all. Psalm 145 verse 14. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. No matter how many people are in a state of despair, he's able to lift them all. He's able to lift everyone all. Everyone all of us, because he's the all-powerful one. He doesn't need you to help him. So I don't care what situation you are in right now. You cannot be destroyed. Even if you fall, the Bible says, even though the righteous man falls seven times, seven times the Lord will uphold him and strengthen him. Have you made some mistakes? Maybe your business has fallen. God will raise you up again. In the name of Jesus. Your career will rise again. In the name of Jesus. Your children will do well again. In the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says that when men say there's a casting down. I will say that there's a lifting up. Because it's the glory and the lift up of our head. Number six, he is all righteous and all holy. Psalm 145 verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. That's why Jesus could boldly declare. In John chapter 14 verse 30. Amplified version. Please could you give me that amplified version. John chapter 14 verse 30. He says, I will not speak with you much longer. For the ruler of the world, that is Satan, is coming. And he has no claim on me. No power over me. No anything that he can use against me. The devil cannot have anything against me. Why? Because I'm all righteous and all holy. He can only gain a foothold if he sees unholiness in you. But God, Jesus was saying, I am all righteous. I am all holy. So he can't hold me. I'm too hot for him to handle. Too cold for him to touch. You know, there are some things that there, eh, you will think heat is good. When you touch something cold, nobody will tell you, you will remove your hand. Hallelujah. And because Jesus is righteous, what are you? You are too hot for the devil to handle. Because when he left, what did he do? He imputed his righteousness into you. Glory to God. He imputed his righteousness into you. So the devil will see you just walk up us. He'll be like this one. He'll be like say, now nah, Jesus, brother. And it will do you good not only be below your standard. You know when you're playing with sin? You are living below your standard. 
that are toying with temptation. You are living below your standard. You are living below your nature. They're not supposed to find you for that sign. Yeah. You know, you see some people learn eh? when they, they are born somewhere in Lagos. When they get to somewhere in this Lagos, they'll be looking like, you know, there's a word like this. Because they are unaware of that world. They are oblivious of that world. That is how sin should be to you. It should be strange. They say people are drinking. You say, ah, you people are sick. People are still drinking alcohol. Hey, are you, re- you are serious? Ah, in this day and age, they are talking drugs. They are looking, say drugs. You, you mean you are drinking drugs? Ah, how does it taste in your mouth? Ah, you are very foolish. Oh. At your age, you are drinking. You are taking drugs. Ah, you need to grow up. That's how sin should be to you. Very strange and alien to your nature. Why? Because God has paid a price for you and he has imputed righteousness into you. So the devil cannot tempt you with such things. Let me say, ah, I know his weak point. If you just give me a fine girl like this that is looking all sexy, he will fall. The lady stands in front of you naked. You say, hey, what's this? Is this a mommy or a doll? My friend, come on up. Look at how you are looking. They, 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 so they told you that this one is my mom button. Go and tell them it didn't work. Or they bring money in dollars. They say we fall. Nobody can nobody can can withstand dollars. They brought it. They open they say, Oh God, just do this thing. Just put your signature. They open it, say, eh, ah. so green paper exists like this. Why did you go to the forest to go and carry paper? What's this? He said, oh, I don't you understand. He said, I don't understand. I don't know. He said, you know, you rub my back, I rub my back. He said, with a deal or what? <laughs> I don't have a bony key in my office. So. <laughs> Do you have back pain? I can refer you to a doctor. I don't rub people's back here. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physiotherapist. He said, you don't understand. I said, I don't. Oh, God, I wish someone that we are saying, he said, you can't even, I, I can't relate. Because I'm not of this world. I'm not of this world. I can't relate. I don't understand what you're talking about. I was talking to, when I was in the bank, there was a lady who was in charge of the treasury. And I was just talking to her. You know, I went to do an um, attachment there. They told HR people to go and do attachment in the branches so that we can know what people are going through. So when you're in the office, just write saying it's about staff. And see what they are seeing there. So I told her, I said, how do you cope being the person that enters into the vault with all the money, dollars? She said, I just see paper. She said, when I enter it, all I see is paper. I don't see value. I just see paper. She has programmed her mind. So she cannot thief money. You know some people, they will borrow it, return it back. Yeah. Things happen. Because you are in charge of the vault. You can borrow it and return it. They may not know. But she says, I just see paper. Number seven. He hears all. Psalm 145 verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him. In truth. It's funny when you hear people say, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and God did not hear me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. Why will God not even answer my prayer? Really? His number is never out of service. He never has network issues. His number is never late. He's not busy. He's never switched off. You know, the Holy Spirit is very, very funny. This morning, as I was just ruminating over it, you know, he said that Jesus would talk in the, the language of the people, in the language that they understand. So he spoke in agrarian language, and he spoke, you know, about sheep and oxen and all of that. So the Holy Spirit was just 
He was just teasing me this morning. He said his network does not discriminate. That's our language. Whether it is 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. He has all Gs. You call, he will answer you. He will not say you are using iPhone or techno. Mm -mm. The moment you say hello, daddy, he will see we pick it up. He doesn't discriminate. He doesn't. And you know, the beauty about it is that even when you don't verbalize it, he says he hears the thought of your heart. Shut up. Even your thoughts, he hears it. He hears all. That was why the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 verse 12, the Bible said that she said it in her own house and said to herself, if I can but touch the helm of his garment, I will be made whole. She touched, he heard, she was made whole. Just a touch. It wasn't even a thought. She touched, heaven heard, and the answer came. He hears all. He hears all. While you are yet asking, he says the answer is coming. Hush. What a good God. So whatever it is that you have in your heart today, you can ask him. He will hear you. And he will answer you. Number eight. He preserves all. Psalm 145 verse 20 a. He says the Lord preserves all them who love him. He says he will preserve your going out and coming in. Psalm 91. Preservation is the act or process of keeping something safe from damage or deterioration. It means to keep something from spoiling or decay or rottenness. Hallelujah. You know, it's like when you put your food in the freezer. As long as there's Nepal, and it's not this, this kind of bulb light snapper that even you cannot see with it. Good light. Even if you keep 40 items in it, every one of them will be preserved, correct? Have you seen the fish to say, hey, hmm. The way we are in this freezer. <laughs> I know this freezer doesn't like fish. If it is goat meat now. Hope day. If it is chicken now. Hope day. I have to struggle. I got a struggle. I got a hustle for this cold. Because this freezer doesn't like me. So I must hustle for the cold that is bringing. That's how we behave. When we are making life hustle. Mamos hustle. Mamos. I got a struggle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every food item in the freezer will receive cold. Every one of his children will be preserved. He doesn't discriminate. He will preserve you if you stay in him. If what if I, I got a struggle, I got a hustle, you will hustle. Hallelujah. Ah, you will hustle. Hustle said we bow for you. Hallelujah. So there's no need to worry. I'm not saying you shouldn't plan, but don't worry. How will I eat? How will I clothe? How will I have? This one is I was telling them yesterday about the testimonies. <laughs> when you know, when you want, to, you want to prove that you are the one that is keeping yourself. And you're telling God, ah, God, I need my money. They are owing me. This one, this one. God, I'm giving God condition. By August, my company must pay me. 
And so God will be saying, okay, so I should go and hold the neck of the people in your office, Abby. If they don't give you, what will you do? Like my friend will say, do what you, what, what happened in 1975 will happen again. What happened? I walked away. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do you need? Just tell him what you need. Leave the house to him. The money I was, I got to, I got to get it. It's my right. It's my leg. It's my <laughs> Uh, it's not your money. If you know you can do company, go and start your own. You're fighting with somebody in this company. God gave me another source. The money I was waiting for, in fact, it, it was like three times what I was expecting. I got a struggle. Hallelujah. He preserves all. I remember when Melody was starting, when she wanted to go for school, her secondary school, yes, one. We wanted to go to the school for the interview. So, first stage, we went. She passed. They said we should come for second stage. In our excitement, we overslept. And we're going inside, 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 inside the corridor. Then it started raining. So I started giving God time. I will check GPS. Hey, hey, 15 minutes. Oh, 45 minutes. I'll say, God, please give us 45 minutes. Give us 45 minutes. Hey, GPS is saying 45 minutes. Then, there was traffic. Then the GPS again, we say, <laughs> recalibrating 58 minutes. Hey, God, 58 minutes. Give us 58 minutes. Hey. I was just doing that drama with God inside the car. After a while, you got tired of me. He said, we shall do what? Wait, 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 wait. Because they're just changing time for me. First it was 40. Now it's this. Here is this. What do you want? Do you want time? Or do you want them not to start before you get there? It will fail more day. Don't jump in there now. Because I'm hearing every complaint. Because he hears all. I say, sorry, sir. Actually, what I am looking for? Oh, buy it or no? Don't buy the one talking to Vefira. You are looking for money. You want to buy it or no? When you get that money, what do you want you to buy? It's not honor. So I said, God, actually, he so that they will not start before we get there. <laughs> so I don't relax. He's got me. When we go to the school, you know, as Abiyamo, so that they will not say, ah, even when I just told it, I tried to form something. <laughs> I was only on the side. He said, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. No, 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 no. The land is wet. The ground is wet. Don't worry. They are just about to start. They were just reading instruction when we got there. She did the exam. The rest is history. She has graduated and moved to another school. So he preserves all. He gives all things at all times. Number nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse eight. He gives all things at all times, not sometimes. So don't hear those people that say, eh, sometimes God's letter is red, then it's amber, then it is green. Foul! God hears all. And he gives all. Now there may be timing, there may be process, but there's no amber with God if you pray according to his will. God said, God, sometimes God, you, have, you, have, you have limited God to traffic light. How dare you? The creator of the heavens and the earth to traffic light. Oh my God. Is it because he's not doing like those days? Go and ask the person that tried to help God with uh, to hold the the. the... Hmm. 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 Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. It says, "And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye having all sufficiency." You see that word again? All, all, without exception, in all things may abound to every good work. Philippians 4, 19 says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his own riches, not CBN of Nigeria. His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. According to his own riches, not our riches. Not the riches of our country. That's why you can be blessed within and without. You are in the village, you will be blessed. 
There are some people that are living in the village. What they have, the person that is hustling, got a hustle in Lagos, does not have it. And they are fresh. God doesn't have scarcity. There is no rationing with God. God will not say, okay, you know, as it be now, you know, say so your country, you get as it be. So I will give you one zero one. Take it or you leave it. God doesn't ration. He says, I have the cattle on a thousand years. If I'm hungry, I won't tell you. I will take it, I will eat. He is more than enough. That's why we called him El Shaddai. <laughs> the multi-breasted one. The God of all sufficiency. During one of our meetings many years ago in Extraordinary Women Fellowship, we were praying one day. And God told us that we shouldn't pity him. Remember? Those who were there. He said, don't pity him. He said he's not intimidated by the size of our request. Eh? He's not intimidated. Eh, sir? <laughs> I can ask for the highest bidding in the world. Though. He said, bring it on. I've got all sufficiency. So don't be looking and saying, hmm. if they say we should pray now, see all the people are in. How oh, I wish the church was not full today. Eh? If God wants to bless us now, see all the people. And, ah, Pastor Tosi can pray. He can pray. Me, I only have two prayer points. If I check Pastor Tosi now, he will have 16. And he's close to God. Say, Pastor. Pastor Tosi, I small. Be very careful with your prayer request. Come on, Rawanta. No. <laughs> He's all sufficient. So when you are coming to God, don't be don't be don't be for me humble. Be bringing small cup. Ah. Ah. Me and Modiba bend over. Not even twist when it comes to God. I can bring trailer. I say, Daddy, Daddy. You say you are not intimidated. Feel it. And he would just look at you and say, this, you, brought, you brought trailer. When some people are bringing, <laughs> if you see some people's requests, especially when we are coming for prayer in extraordinary women, some people will be like 16. So I've learned not to be humble with God. I made some very audacious demand this year, and I'm seeing it. It will happen because he is sufficient, he's all sufficient. So if you like, pity God. When you get to heaven, he shows you your storehouse. That all your low load is still there. So, number 10. He gives peace all the time. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. Not sometimes, always, in every way, the Lord be with you all. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he wants us to experience his peace at all times. When unfavorable situations come, just keep your peace. Fight for your peace. Because when you don't have peace, you cannot exercise your authority. Your heart is doing kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. You cannot be at peace. You cannot be at rest. You cannot walk over that situation. That was why when the boat was doing bra 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 bra, what did Jesus do? Ah, I want to be like Jesus. He was sleeping. Do you want to tell me that he wasn't hearing that ba bo ba bo that the boat was ah ah Sleep of death. But it was because he had peace. He knew that this one. Mm, he's just. He can't drown me. I've got a purpose to fulfill. My life is not kites. I've told myself. It's, it's kites that you can cut it sometimes. It come. Mm -mm, my life is not kites. I am fully established in God. I'm rooted in him. I will enjoy this life. Is when I am satisfied. And I will say, Daddy, I think it's time to go. But they will say they should come and collect my body on the road. Kojo. Or in the air. Mm -mm. 
Or they say, ah, the plane enter water. They can't, then they will not do post too much. No, they will bury my body. I buried my father's body. They will bury my body. Even though it's body, yes. Because I will not die anyhow. He gives his peace. I remember one day, <laughs> we were in the plane. He said, when you are in the plane, in turbulence, that's when you know the Buddha, no God. <laughs> and once I don't know him. He will be here in the Father, forgive me, oh Jesus. <laughs> because, and the other say, if this is the way to go, I better make peace with God. Then you'll be here in the rubber. I say, please, don't spit on me. Oh. I beg you. It's not the time to be drinking caca, caca, coco. That day I was traveling to the UK. We went through Amsterdam. Ah, that turbulence was turbulent. Yeah? I just sat down in the place. I said, Father, I remember that scripture that says, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Father, it is UK that I that bury in Nigeria that I am going. It's not Amsterdam. I will not fall here. Lord, take control. Now I begin wonder. I started listening to different versions of prayer. Listening to different versions of prayer. The one that is carrying uh, what, whatever anybody knew as their God, just like the time of Jonah. Is everybody called upon the name of his God? It was happening that day. I laughed. I, I'm sure some of them, they will beat me silly. But I just tell myself that after all this prayer, if the plane go jai, go jao. So let me Kukuma keep my peace. But I have said I'm going to the UK. So to the UK, I shall go. After a while, I think when the devil saw that, uh, some people are praying, some people are resting. It's okay, let us say, uh, mm. he left us. We came down. Everybody went his way. Hallelujah. Invoke the peace of God. Sometimes I'm tempted. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I remember last week, my children went somewhere, their phones were switched off. Hey! My head went, bah, go, bah, bah. Our phones switched off. Later, when they came, God had a field day with me. He said, shut up. No, say, you're happy. Food, you didn't eat. You ran out of the house without bra, running every... <laughs> my children, my children, my children. I was just... Ah... The Holy Spirit laughed me, mock. He mocked me, die, daddy. I just say, you know, you are a human being. It was because of the thing that happened before. If the issue that she had not happened, maybe I wouldn't have thought like that. Because the, a few days before that, my mother disappeared from the network. Everybody was looking for her. Her phone, the phone was drinking, she didn't pick it. Tisha called me. Hey, grandpa called me. Mommy, grandma, they can't find her. They think she's lost. What did I say to you, Tisha? I said, my mother is not lost in Jesus' name. Full stop. I didn't say more than that. I said, look for her. But my mother is not lost. I had peace. But because of the thing that happened to her, the devil was trying to mess up with my brain. But then, what we're saying is this. He is the God of all peace. Even in the midst of those things, you can say, Father, you know I'm troubled. Help me. Help me. Help me. Because we are all work in progress. I'm not here to tell you, oh, I'm a superstar. We are all work in progress. Working towards perfection. And he's gentle with us because he knows our frame. Hallelujah. The last one, number 11. He makes all alive. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. He makes all alive. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ shall rise again on the last day. None shall be left behind. None. This is because he is faithful and true. He has said it, he cannot lie. All those people say, I pray I make it on the last day. Oh, Father, help me to make it. Help me to make it. Help me to make it. Ah. You? you know that it, Jesus, the disciples had not died when Jesus was saying that all that you have given me, I have kept. <laughs> they were not dead yet. Oh. He said, I have kept all that you have given me. 
They were not dead yet. But he said, I have kept all that you have given me. You have given your life to Christ. He has, he's keeping you. You cannot be lost in action on the day of resurrection. No way. He me to make it. On the last day, only true believer will be that. Who is true? Who is a fake believer? Is it that you believe or you don't? Only true believer. Okay, I'm a true believer. I'm back, eh? You don't have to hope for rapture. If you are here, if when Jesus comes, you will be raptured. And if you are not, you will be resurrected. So you can be rest assured. You can be rest assured. Your, your, your eternity has been taken care of. You just need to be responsible and live the way he wants you to live. That's why John the Beloved, he has not died yet though. Look at what he said. In John, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. He says, Beloved, now we are the children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know. <laughs> Tell yourself, I know. He says, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Did you see him say, we hope that when he comes, we will be like him. We will be raptured. Ah, Father God, let this be your prayer. Pray, oh Lord, make me rapturable. He says, I know. When he comes, we shall be, I don't know how it's going to look like, but when he comes, I, I, I will see how I will look like. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God is all in all. He wants you to enjoy life. Every aspect of your life. Not one aspect, every aspect. So there's, if there's any area in your life or of your life that is not up to, you are serving the God who is all in all. Talk to him about it. Just tell him, God, this area is not fixed yet. I want you to help me to fix it. I want you to help me to touch this part. This area is not yet up to what I want. Help me. And if you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. Or you have not, you, you, have, you have been in the house, then you went or you know, you played away. Come home. Is anybody here who have not yet given their lives over to the Lord Jesus? All that we are talking about is, is not for you. I'm sorry. Because you need to be a member of the family. You can experience some, you know, the mercy of God traces. It's because he is good to all. But for you to enjoy the best of God, if you're here, you've not given your life over to the Lord Jesus. Please, I want you to raise up your hand. Don't be ashamed. If you've not given your life over to Christ, raise up your hand. It's not here to do, to, you know, be, you're doing guy with God. Oh, oh, oh. Person will not see you like that. You can't guy with God now. Sure you know. He's the real guy, man. I mean, you don't know that it's pride for you to go and walk upon water and not look back. That's what they call guy, man. Hallelujah. Somebody will carry five loaves of bread and two fish and break and expect it to go down to 5,000 people. That's guy, man. Confidence. Hallelujah. I just want us to pray. If there's nobody like that, let's pray. Just ask God. The Father, I've heard your word. You are my God who is all in all. Thank you, Father. You are the one that preserves me. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you hear me every time I call. Thank you, Father, because you will preserve me. Thank you because I am your righteousness because you imputed your righteousness into me. And therefore, sin will not have dominion over me. 
I will walk in dominion in all areas of my life. Father, I give you praise. I receive my healing. Thank you, Father God, because I know my salvation is secure in you. I give you glory, O oh God. I give you praise. Thank you, Father, for encouraging us this morning, for telling us who you are and what you are to us. Lord, we appropriate all of this. We appropriate it in our lives. Our lives will give you praise. Our lives will give you glory. Our lives will be a testimonial saying, I am that one whom the Lord loves. We give you thanks, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen.